NAD declines during aging, and that's important because it impacts hallmarks of aging, including cell senescence, mitochondrial dysfunction, DNA damage, and many others. But what about telomere shortening? So I now have data for 11 tests, and we can ask the question, are blood intracellular levels of NAD significantly correlated with telomere length? And taking it a step further, is NAD significantly correlated with measures of biological age? And those measures include Dudin and PACE, which is potentially the best epigenetic clock for measuring or evaluating the epigenetic pace of aging, Horvath, which is the best epigenetic clock for asking the question, how old are you? And then PhenoAge, which if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me make many videos about. It's a standard clinical chemistry-based biomarker biological age calculator that includes things like albumin, creatinine, glucose, uh, HSCRP, and others. And then taking it a step further, I also have data for about 25 other biomarkers. So is NAD significantly correlated with any of those biomarkers? So let's start off by taking a look at telomere length versus NAD, which is what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got DNA M telomere length. So that's the DNA methylation. This is an epigenetic estimation of telomere length. And to generate that data, I sent it to True Diagnostic. And as a quick side note, uh, epi the epigenetic estimation of telomere length may be a better measure than standard, the standard ways to measure telomere length, at least in terms of all-cause mortality. And if anyone is interested in seeing that paper, I'll post it in the video's comments. All right, and then on the x-axis, we've got NAD, blood intracellular levels of NAD. And to generate that data, I sent it to Ginfinity. So if you want to measure your own telomere length or NAD levels, there are discount links in the video's description. So in terms of the correlation, we can see that it's not significant. Telomere length is not significantly correlated with NAD. As you can see, that p-value, as highlighted in red, is not close to below less than 0.05, with a p-value of 0.75. All right, what about Dunedin Pace? And as I mentioned, it's potentially the best epigenetic clock for addressing the epigenetic speed or pace of aging. And if you missed that video, I'll put it in the right corner. But more recently, it's been popularized because of the Rejuvenation Olympics, which is basically a competition to see who has the slowest epigenetic pace of aging, as the, the Rejuvenation Olympics includes or uses Dunedin Pace, with the data shown here for Dunedin Pace versus NAD. And here, too, we can see that the correlation is not significant for Dunedin Pace versus NAD, as the p-value is 0.36. You know, if we even took it a step further, the, the trend lines for both telomere length is downward, right, so inverse, which suggests that higher NAD is correlated with a shorter telomere length. But again, note that it's not a significant correlation, so we can't say that. But nonetheless, that trend line is going in the wrong direction. Similarly, for Dunedin Pace, that trend line would be going in the wrong direction too, as higher NAD is correlated with a higher Dunedin Pace. But again, the p-value is not significant, so we can't conclude that. We can conclude that NAD is not significantly correlated with Dunedin Pace. Nonetheless, trend lines are not going in the right direction. All right, what about the correlation for NAD with Horvath's epigenetic age? And that's what we can see here. And now that trend line is going in the right direction. As you can see, uh, higher levels of NAD would be correlated with a younger Horvath's epigenetic age. But in terms of the stats, they're not significantly correlated. You can see the p-value is 0.24, which is greater than 0.05, the threshold for statistical significance. So NAD is not significantly correlated with Horvath's epigenetic age. So from these three epigenetic measures, telomere length, Dunedin pace, and Horvath, we can see that at least through 11 tests, NAD is not significantly correlated with any of these measures. But as a weakness or a limitation in this story, note that I only have one data point for NAD levels, blood intracellular levels uh, of NAD, in the 30 to 60 micromolar range. Most of my data is less than 30 micromolar, and I've got two data points that are uh, greater than 60 micromolar. So the plan for NAD for tests going forward is to slowly increase my nicotinic acid supplementation so that I can generate more NAD data, you know, 30, 32, 34, so that we can really see what, what does the data look like with a spread from 20 micromolar to 60 plus micromolar, rather than having just three data points higher than about 30 micromolar? All right, so what about phenoage? Is NED significantly correlated with phenoage? And that's what we can see here. And just visually, right from the jump, we can see that the trend line is going in the right direction. So higher NED would be correlated with a younger phenoage. But in terms of the stats, they are not significantly correlated as that p-value is 0.6 far higher than 0.05, the threshold for significance. But in this case, it looks like we've got an outlier. So 
Uh, greater than 60 micromolar for NAD, that's the only spot. Actually higher than 40 micromolar, it's just out there all by itself. Potential outlier. So if I remove that data and rerun the stats, 10 test analysis, the correlation improves. You can see it goes from negative 0.18 to more negative, negative 0.39, and that p-value gets closer to 0.05, 0.26, but still, nonetheless, over 10 or 11 tests, whether or not we take out that outlier, NAD is not significantly correlated with phenol age. So we can see from uh, evaluating telomere length and three other measures of biological age, at least through 11 tests, NAD is not significantly correlated with any of these measures. So what about NAD being correlated with other biomarkers? So for those who don't know, I don't go to my physician and basically beg them to run tests every couple of months, which would be a, a nightmare. I mean, from my pre previous experience in trying to get that done in the early days uh, in 2015 of using this approach, I basically had to beg my physician to blood test all the things that I wanted to blood test for. Fortunately, if you live in the States, uh, you can use Ulta Labs. Uh, and Ulta Labs is basically where you go to their website, you pick the blood test that you want to measure, you bring them to Quest if you're in the United States, and then for a $10 blood draw fee or something in that ballpark, you they draw they generate your data. And I got results for almost all of my data for the uh, blood test number five in 2024 within 24 hours, which is pretty fantastic. So if you're, re if you're a regular blood tester like me and you want to help, help support the channel, there's an affiliate link for Ulta Labs in the video's description. All right, so is NAD associated or significantly correlated with any of the standard uh, chemistry panel 25 biomarkers. So there were indeed significant inverse correlations for the sum of AST plus ALT. These are mostly liver specific enzymes and I find it more informative to com combine both AST and ALT as they're basically collinear, at least for me. In my case, they either increase together or decrease together. So I find that measuring this, their sum is more informative than looking at either of them individually. So higher NAD is significantly correlated with a lower AST and ALT, and that's potentially good news because values, uh, relatively high values, you know, getting towards 40 and above, is associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality. Uh, higher NAD is also significantly correlated with lower LDL, which in terms of heart disease mortality risk could be good news. And if you want to see the actual R values and P values for all of these correlations, for the 25 correlations, that's on the correlations tier on Patreon with a whole bunch of other correlations. So check it out if you're interested. All right, there were also some significant positive correlations. So higher NAD was significantly correlated with higher levels of platelets. And notice that I've got the ones going in the right direction coded as green. So the platelet correlation with NAD could be a potentially good thing as platelets decline during aging. So if NAD is causative, and we don't know if it's causative, it's just a correlation. If it's causative in higher platelets, that would potentially resist an age-related decline. And then we can see also that NAD is significantly uh, uh, correlated or positively correlated with systolic blood pressure, SBP. And that's going in the wrong direction because systolic blood pressure increases during aging. So that's an interesting, or at least an interesting correlation for me, because if you if you saw the, the paper that was published earlier this year for niacin metabolites causing vascular inflammation, or niacin degradation metabolites causing vascular inflammation, it raises the interesting question of, is higher NAD, and to get there, I have to supplement with nicotinic acid, which is niacin, or one of the two forms of niacin, is higher NAD in, in response to higher uh, niacin supplementation, is that leading to some amount of vascular inflammation and then negatively impacting or increasing systolic blood pressure? I don't know the answer to that. We'll see how this story plays out with more, uh, more data, more NAD data, more uh, tracking of blood pressure. So stay tuned for that in a future video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you may be interested in that you can help support the channel while blood testing on your own, including Ulta Labs, epigenetic testing, NED quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB and also GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or you can support the channel with buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.